Hello. Hi Aziza. Are you here? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Can you please turn on your video if that's possible so we I can see you? Cool. Okay, yes. thank you. Oh, great. You're beautiful. It's okay. So please turn on your video. Okay. So how are you today, Aziza? I'm good, thank you. Great. Awesome. Okay. And then is it your first time to come here? Actually, this is not the first time. I think mm -hmm. I went to Brit Zone in 2019 before COVID and okay. it was in uh, Ministry of Education Library. Yeah. Oh, so it's an offline class. Yeah. Oh, great. Awesome. Wow. Um, we are glad to have you here in our online class and coming back here again. Thank <laughs> you for coming. And then where do you live exactly? I live in Depok. Oh, you live in Depok. Wow, great. Wow. So do you know what's the topic here today? About the research. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. what do you think about that? Yeah, that that will be an interesting topic because I'm working in research field. So, yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Wow, thank you, Aziza. I'm, I hope that our class today will make you satisfied and coming back again to our blood sound class. Thank you, Aziza. Thank okay, you. now I would like to talk with uh, Aldi. Are you here? Uh, yes. 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 Oh, yeah. How are you today, Aldi? Uh, I'm fine. Great. Where are you? I, huh? I saw that your poster. Uh, I'm at home. Oh, you're at home. Are you a fan of Superman? Yes, yes. <laughs> because I saw your poster in the Superman. Yes, and, and the next is Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter. So uh, is it that that is why? Because you like research about this topic today? Because Harry Potter best friend is like studying. Uh, what? Sorry? Is it because of that, or why do you, why do you come for the, uh, uh, the class today? Uh, because you know I, about this I want to know about uh, research and a uh, fun debunking the myths about uh, myths about the research. I mean, uh, there's something a myth behind behind the research, uh, or maybe uh, the the research is uh, going tricky or uh, has been tricky about uh, according to myth something like that mm, so what do you think about the research research is uh is a search for data search for a, a sample of the data to to know the object what you're looking for to know about uh knowledge what you want you to know to know about a uh, behavior that uh, the 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 people the people that you research something like that. Mm, I see, great. So I hope that this class will satisfy you. And I I remember that you want to be in uh, like study about astronaut a space, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I hope that. Uh, like uh, our conductor this evening will like give you inspire you to become a researcher soon. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Aldi. Thank you. Nice to see you. Okay. Now I, I would like to talk to Iman. Iman Arianto. Yes, I am. Hello. Uh, so what should I call you? Uh, you can call me Iman. Okay. Thank you, Iman, for coming today. So what do you think about this 
but this topic like i already like talk to aldi and then talk to aziza so what do you think what about actually you? actually i don't know uh what this uh research is burning fun the bonding the mythic about research uh why i why i want to join this this meeting because i want to know what what some uh, something this <clears throat> research is burning pun they bring the basic about research mm. actually i don't know also you want to know yeah yes you, you are curious about that yeah, yeah. Uh, so have you ever involved in the research before um mm, no no, oh, so yeah. that's why you are curious. Yeah, uh, that's why I want to join this meeting. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. And I really Thank glad you. to have you here. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ivan. Nice to talk to you. My pleasure. Okay. Now, okay. So, because our talk. Yeah. Nice to see you. Okay. Now, I would like Hello? to talk to... Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Sophia. Yes, yes we can okay. hear you. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I heard it calling. So is that okay now? Yeah. It's okay, perfect. great. Okay. So, Beverly, uh, could you help me share screen about the... Oh, the announcement or what? Oh, wait a minute. What the announcement? Okay. Uh, Dika, would you like to please share the nearest one? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, okay, please. Okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, wait, wait a minute, guys. Here, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now. Welcome to Rhythm, the largest English community in Indonesia. And we are here, uh, our headquarters in Jakarta. Okay, next. Okay, so our focus is uh, English education, for, uh, exactly. And then we are free and open platform, so it is free for everyone uh, at all ages and don't uh, like it doesn't matter about your accent or anything so just free to uh, just free to come and let's join and then it's basically for tourism so our community is formed here and then our conductor is also open here. okay next Okay, so this is for today. This is a uh, Bridgestone Speaking Academy and start at 7 p.m. And it's focused on public speaking, like speech, debate, interview, etc. Next. Okay, 
And this is for tomorrow is the British Sound English Betterment Series. And it starts tomorrow at 7 p.m. also. And for skills in English, like listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Okay, next. And then British Sound Sunday class is on Saturday. Starts at 11 a.m. And it will bring various fun topics to discuss. Okay, so we are also online, okay, in online platform like Instagram and our YouTube, our Twitter, Clubhouse, website, and the podcast. Okay, X. And then also we are just newly announced, uh, newly published that our Bizon official merchandise. And then if like there's a lot of uh, we offer a t-shirt, sticker pack, top bag, and notebook. Just can to order and then contact us for order for more information. Next, okay, and then our loyal sponsor is Ministry of Ministry of Education and Culture. And then sign up for 32K book collection, audio and video collection. Next. Yeah. And this, this is our after class tradition. We are taking a picture and then forget to give us your feedback at our WhatsApp group. And then uh, uh, for exception for this class, but uh, we will have the after class tradition before our class is over. So please turn on your video so we can see your beautiful and handsome face. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I bet all of you are already excited for today. So I will. Uh, I will greet our conductor first. Okay, Kak Yum, hello. Hi, hello everyone. Hello, Kak. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Where are you right now? Um, I'm in France uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Besançon City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. I think my study here. Oh, that's nice. Like that. And then, uh, is it winter already? Is it cold? Oh, uh, it's uh, spring now over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can see you are wearing a sweater. Yeah, I don't know why, but today it's kind of weird because it's uh, raining like uh, cat and dogs today. It's, I don't know, it's quiet. Um, cold for me because I'm <laughs> as you know that I'm a tropical lady so <laughs> yeah, yeah even if the foreigners say that it's uh, hot already but for me it's still I see. <laughs> yeah okay. thank you so, for inviting me it's yeah an honor to be and part of this for us too. and I'm glad to meet you, Ka. <laughs> like, it's been a long time I haven't met you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for today, Ka? Yes. Okay. So, without further ado, let's give it up for Ka Yum or Ka Ningrumdo. Okay, give it a pause for her, Ka. Yay. Yay. Come on. All right. Uh, floor is yours. Okay. Um, please allow me to share my screen. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. 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 Great. And how about my voice? Is it clear enough? Uh, we can hear that um, something. Like uh, that. Okay. Some noises. Yeah, like yeah. a calling her. How about now? Is it no, much okay. better? Okay. Uh, clear yet. All right. So 
Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good mm-hmm. evening for Indonesia. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you very much uh, again. Thank you for inviting me to uh, be part of this amazing event. Um, I really, I, I feel like this is a very um, amazing event, awesome activity, because uh, back then when I was in Indonesia, I felt like it, it's very difficult for me to, to look for uh, colleagues, friends uh, for practicing, uh, for, for practicing my English. So yeah, I really appreciate this um, community because you guys are amazing. Well, um, today uh, we would like to discuss or I would like to present about uh, research. Maybe some of you have known about this. Um, yep, um, this idea uh, came up uh, when I realized that um, many people think research is a boring thing. It's a you know a dull activity that sometimes people uh, label scientists or people who work in the research activity as a nerd or something like that, and the common stereotype for them. It's quite negative, if I could say. So uh, I think I need to bring this topic uh, to the table today. Uh, research uh, to, to, to explain or to present to you that uh, research is not boring. It's actually fun. And uh, I will uh, like to try to debunk the myth about research. So, okay. to Kickstart, um, please allow me to introduce myself, of course. Uh, my name is Pangi Kusuma Ningrum. You can call me Ningrum or just Ning. Um, I graduated from uh, UNES. Uh, anyone know UNES? It's uh, Samarang State University. Uh, and I got my bachelor degree actually in law science. After that, I continue my degree uh, in Thailand and obtain my master uh, in science, uh, especially in research methodology. And yeah, every every time people ask me about what is what is your major for your master, and I say it research methodology, and they usually uh, reply to me like, "Is that?" even a major research methodology. I thought that it's only, you know, uh, one of the subject in the university or something like that. And yep, uh, actually, if you are talking about research methodology, um, even for me, I felt like two years is not enough <laughs> to learn the whole things uh, in uh, about research and methodology. And then, uh, I continue my uh, degree, and currently I work as a PhD fellow uh, in France at the University of Bourgogne, Franche Comte, uh, in the field of natural language processing. So, uh, what is PhD fellow actually? Uh, if some of you uh, may be thinking about what is PhD fellow? What is the difference between PhD student and PhD fellow? So basically, uh, I got some funding and scholarship from the um, from the government here in in France to do the research to do some uh, research projects. Then um, I can uh, by by doing so I can obtain my PhD degree. So it's like I work, I'm working as a researcher while pursuing my my PhD degree, something like that. So that's why uh, 
I consider myself as a PhD fellow rather than PhD student. Well, um, in this special occasion, uh, there are three things that I actually would like to share with you. Uh, the first one is about a glimpse of my research. We are talking, we will talk about, uh, or we will discuss about um, what is natural language processing and uh, uh, what should we do that and something like that. And what, what uh, actually uh, I, I mean, uh, what, what topic or what issue that uh, I am currently searching or researching about and something like that. And uh, the next uh, point is about the research in Indonesia. We need to uh, start to discuss about this topic because um, as far as I know, not many people really want to discuss about this or there are not enough uh, news or uh, sources that we can read about how the condition, uh, how, how uh, the, the research and its condition in Indonesia are nowadays, something like that. So uh, I think it's uh, crucial for us to discuss about this. Next, uh, we will try to debunk about myth, uh, debunk the myth about research. Okay, um, so uh, this is uh, the program that uh, I'm taking at the moment in uh, my PhD journey. So the program uh, is called PhD Fellowship in Natural Language Processing in the field of mining scientific papers. Sorry, guys, uh, if, if this sound like very heavy topic, but it's actually not uh, because natural language processing is actually a part of artificial intelligence. So if any of you uh, really interest in this topic, maybe uh, you have known already about NLP, but um, for those who don't have any idea about this topic, actually every day in your daily life, you used to uh, interact with this natural language processing technology like Google Translate or uh, search engine, or even while uh, you are typing on your phone, um, sending your uh, message or any text, uh, from your phone, uh, it contains uh, natural language processing technology in it. For example, like uh, when you uh, type your uh, any text on your phone, and uh, there is a suggestion for the next or, or a prediction for the next uh, word uh, on your message, that's uh, natural language processing, actually. So in a simple word, um, natural language processing is like a technology that use uh, text as the data. So uh, that's uh, what I, I'm working on at the moment. Uh, but for me, the data uh, can uh, come from the scientific papers. So yeah, uh, my data for, for uh, the data for my research uh, are texts in scientific papers. And uh, this program is very uh, diverse. I mean, uh, it's multidisciplinary. It um, involves computer science, data science, linguistic, and even social science. So maybe uh, that's why I feel uh, this field is really me because uh, I am a divergent. I graduated from, uh, you know, uh, low uh, background and then continue my study to research methodology, which is uh, under mathematics and computer uh, uh, science department. And then, yeah, so I'm a divergent. <laughs> so uh, this, this program is um, multidisciplinary. 
and uh, these are the sponsor of my research. Um, the main sponsor uh, is ANR. It's uh, an institution under a minister, Ministry of Education in France, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so uh, to conclude, uh, natural language processing is like uh, trying to teach the computer, the machine, to understand the human language so that uh, we, can't, uh, we can't make the computer to understand and to, to do some tasks for us because they, they already uh, start to understand about the human language, something like that. But before I can do that, I need to learn their language first so that I can teach them uh, about the human language. So that's uh, what I'm doing uh, in, yeah, in my daily activity now. Okay, so uh, next uh, we are talking about the research in Indonesia. Um, any, any one of you guys know about Global Innovation Index? No? No. All right. About it. All right. So Global Innovation Index is actually an annual ranking uh, uh, that is conducted by, uh, it's, um, you know, how to say that. Uh, it's an annual ranking of countries that capture the innovation ecosystem, uh, ecosystem performance of uh, 132 economies. Uh, so uh, it can uh, so from from the report we can see that how is the innovation from those countries. Um, there are a lot of um, indicators that they use to measure uh, the score so that they can rank every country uh, in their list. Uh, it includes seven main categories like the institution, human capital, and research, and blah 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 blah, and uh, until the creative inputs uh, outputs you can uh, read it here. So uh, if you're talking about the innovation, it will be you know uh, strongly related to research, to R and D, research and development, and uh, from this report we can measure uh, we can know uh, the uh, the position of our country uh, among those uh, other countries in this world so um, yeah uh, i use this global innovation index report to let you know how is the condition how, how is the research condition in indonesia well in 2020 indonesia is ranked 87th among 132 economies. I'm meaning that it's like uh, in now, uh, 87th among 132 countries. Uh, and I guess this is not a good rank because it, it's like, uh we we are in the bottom of the list and if we uh if we look at the ranking among the you know middle income co uh, group economies or uh in count uh, among the countries in southeast asia these are our ranking actually it's not a good uh, score, uh, we, we don't get a good score, uh, in my opinion. Um, there are a lot of factors that contribute uh, to this score, to, to this ranking. Um, one of them, uh, because previously I showed you, these are the main categories uh, for the score and for the uh, ranking. So one of the factors that really contribute to this ranking is that the number of resources that we have at the moment in our country. 
because uh, if we uh, if we look at uh, the effort or some um, some work from our neighborhood like Thailand or South Korea, for example, to improve their research and innovation, uh, they try to harvest more resources in their country. And uh, because of that, we need to know uh, how many resources that we have in Indonesia. So according to United Nations, uh, before we um, before we uh, before I show you the the number of the resources in Indonesia, I will let you know uh, the number of resources in Vietnam. It's uh, two hundred and seven point seven uh, people per million people in two thousand and seventeen. Because uh, the recent report. Uh, from the United Nations is in 2017, and some of the country is in 2018. And this is the condition in Thailand. They have uh, 1,340.3 uh, people per million people in 2017. And this is the Ma Malaysia, and even Singapore with a small, small number of population. I mean, comparing to the population that we have in Indonesia, they have a lot of resources in their country. And are you ready guys to know how many uh, resources that we have in Indonesia? This is the number of resources in R&D in Indonesia. So we have very few number of people that work as a researcher in Indonesia. It is predicted to be 458 people in 2025. So we need more uh, talent, we need more people to uh, take part in this a field, we need more people to join us to be uh, a resourcer so that we can improve our innovation, we can uh, increase our um, ranking, our uh, productivity, our, yeah, our research quality in Indonesia. But uh, fortunately, I found some uh, interesting event in Indonesia, but it's not that uh, popular uh, among you know uh, people. But it's very interesting uh, that uh, there is uh, an event called Fun Science Award. Um, they they conduct a competition a competition every year, annual competition for senior high school student so that the senior high school student can do any uh, fun science and do research um, so that, um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, you can see uh, the, the list of the title here. It's very, very um, interesting, I could say. Um, yeah, uh, the the main uh, the, the main point that I would like to deliver uh, to you is actually we need more activity like this. We need more competition like this so that people will think that science is actually not that boring. Science is, uh, can be interesting as well. Science can be fun as well something like that because of our condition in Indonesia right now, like I have uh, explained previously, um, we need more people, more uh, youngsters, especially to, to, to be part of this uh, movement. Okay, uh, next uh, we are talking about the myth about research. So, um, like um, I also uh, explained it previously that um, 
many people think that research is something scary, something complicated, it's boring. And if you're talking about research, we will think about uh, scientists or an, anyone in, who, who work in science in a laboratory that look like, uh, you know, I'm sorry, bald, old, and, and sometimes boring, nerd kind of things. Yep, uh, there are a lot of myths about research. And I, uh, in this uh, event, I only would like to bring five or highlight five of them. Uh, people, uh, people think that research is boring um, and uh, you have to be a genius or nerd to become a scientist or research so that people, oh, I'm not genius enough uh, to be a research. So why I have to be, why I must be a researcher or a scientist, something like that. And people also think that scientists or researchers are weird. They're, they're so uh, old or something like that. And uh, there is some uh, nothing creative about science, math, and computer. It's only a monotone uh, activities that uh, involve uh, a boring cycle of activities, something like that. And um, you cannot make much money being a scientist or researcher, unlike a uh, YouTuber or any fancy uh, profession out there. Well, all of them are actually not true based on my experience. Okay, so yeah, uh, many people think that research is boring. Let uh, we explain, uh, let, let me explain to you why it's interesting and fun. Um, my first assumption is because of uh, since uh, we we were young we were kids at school uh, the teacher or people um, uh, okay let's start from the teacher maybe uh, the, the way teacher teach us about research uh, about science about research is not um, attractive it's not interesting it's kind of complicated and boring with a lot of uh, numbers formula and even complicated uh, figures and graphs something like that so um, it makes us uh, think that um, research is too complicated to me and it's boring but actually the truth is Research is boring, but only when you are researching something that you are not actually interested in it or curious about. Uh, yeah, the same uh, happen uh, in other activity as well. If, if you are not interested or curious enough about it, it, it will be boring for you, right? So uh, actually research is not boring. It's only boring because of we, we don't really know about it. We don't really know about the field. We don't really know about the issue. We don't really know about how to start it, how to do it. So that's why uh, uh, we need to know. We, we need to learn about it. We need to uh, take a look at it. So uh, we can understand bits by bits so that we can uh, prove that research is actually not boring. Uh, this is some example. These are some example that uh, I would like to show to you. Uh, do you know guys Pringles? I, I guess most of you have ever uh, eaten this snack, right? Pringles. Anyone, anyone <laughs> doesn't know about this snack? I guess many of you, most uh, many of you know about this, right? So um, this snack is actually uh, very uh, famous uh, in terms of the shape of the snack. I mean, uh, if you're talking about springless in science 
uh, point of view, Pringles is not that um, simple snack because the shape is actually calculated uh, and design it based on some research. Uh, it's called hyperbolic paraboloids. So um, maybe we we face this. We we know this snack uh, almost every day, but we don't know that uh, there is a science behind this. Why they use this shape for for for, for their potato snack? So yeah, actually. Um, this saddle shape allows for easier stacking of chip because of the calculation uh, behind this shape, the formula behind this uh, hyperbolic paraboloid uh, formula. So uh, you can uh, stack uh, these uh, chips uh, safely so that the uh, they have the zero lowest point, something like that. You can read uh, about this uh, research or about this um, interesting fact. Uh, there are a lot of sources out there if you want to look uh, look at. So uh, yeah, uh, this shape uh, can uh, make it uh, can make the the shape. Uh, um, this, uh, I mean, this shape can minimize the possibility of broken chips during the transportation, and it can increase the crunchy feeling also. Because uh, by using this shape, uh, when we eat the chip, uh, the chips, uh, we cannot predict the crack, uh, the the uh, the where the crack will be uh, appear in this shape. So uh, it can increase the crunchy feelings. So that's why. And another uh, research, uh, there's another sample that I would like to bring is this fact or fiction. I mean, many of us uh, know that sometime when we drop a, a piece of food uh, on the floor and we just say it like in, in, in Bahasa Indonesia, we will say, oh, belum lima menit something like that. And this five second rule for drop food is actually interesting because um, based on the research uh, from the professor Donald Weiss Kaufner. Uh, so actually there, the, sec the five second rule is, um, is one misguided thing. It's uh, a wrong uh, fact that we, we used to believe because no matter how fast uh, you pick up food that falls on the floor, you will pick up bacteria with it, bacteria with it. So uh, it's a fallacy to believe that uh, the five second rule, uh, it's like, oh, that's, that's no problem to, to eat the drop of food uh, within <laughs> five minutes or something like that. So yeah. And this uh, research is also um, interesting because uh, you, you know this guy with uh, who, who, are, who are wearing the glasses? Anyone know him? No? No, no. Okay, he's a disc jockey. He's a DJ, um, and he is quite famous, actually. Uh, his name is Curlex. So what is the relation between Curlex with Mosquito, actually? So there is a research that, um, that was conducted to analyze uh, how is uh, the sound, the music, and the sound wave uh, can affect the mosquito um, uh, I mean uh, to, to prevent the dissemination of a disease something like that so uh, this research um, from Dieng et al uh, analyze one of the song from Skillux albums uh, namely scary monster and nice uh, sprites 
um, and they found that this salt can uh, can prevent um, female mosquito to to bite you because of uh, playing the music kept female mosquitoes away for a longer period of time compared to those who didn't hear the music. So the complex sound wave that uh, that are produced by the song uh, also deterred uh, them from sexual intercourse, meaning that they they will not uh, give birth or yeah uh, spread their population. So that uh, there is a correlation between uh, this music, this kind of music. Uh, with the you know the population of the mosquitoes and this music is predicted to be one of the an alternative to prevent uh the, the spread of dishes so yeah there are so many so many interesting research out there uh, maybe this kind this these three examples are not your staff. I mean, for, for the field, uh, these are not your field, but actually you can find uh, more, uh, a lot of uh, interesting topic out there about uh, the similar re research, uh, like the similar research. All right, so um, I hope that uh, we I can debunk the, the myth about how research is actually interesting and fun uh, from those examples. And next is that uh, the, the second myth uh, that you have to be genius or nerd to become a scientist or researchers. Um, I could say that I'm not genius, I'm not that smart. And even I know, uh, I, I know some of my colleagues that of that was actually not uh, from you know uh, the, the one that have uh, the, the one that has a background like uh, the best graduate from the university or something like that. Uh, they are just regular people who are curious about the word and how it works. So um, I believe that every one of you, every one of us has the potential in us uh, to, to be a resourcer because uh, we, we just don't realize that every day in our life, we actually use that potential, that uh, feeling, that uh, talent to, to survive and to live and thrive in this crazy world. Like for example, maybe uh, for you guys, uh, the one who who are uh, curious about your, let's say, girlfriend or boyfriend, whether uh, he or she is a loyal person or not, or something like that. And uh, we are in our, uh, how to say, um, we actually try to look some facts to prove it. I mean, we try to tell, uh, maybe some of us uh, do some tests to uh, prove that whether he or she is the uh, best uh, couple, the best partner for us, and we we uh, we maybe try to do some research, but not a you know a formal research to prove about many things in our life, and it's it's actually a, a true talent. Uh, that we need to, to be a resourcer. I mean, every one of us has that, but we just don't realize about it. And we just don't know how to do it in a good way, in a correct way, and how to think structurally so that we can prove any um, assumption, any hypothesis that we have. So, yeah. Um, we actually, uh, every one of us actually have that potential. So uh, we don't have to be a genius or a nerd to become a scientist or a researcher. Uh, next myth is that scientists uh, or researchers are weird. 
so the common stereotype that uh, that we put uh, on the researcher or scientist is like this: uh, scientists or researchers uh, must be old or boring or um, weird or something like that. But actually, these are um, actually there the scientists and researchers are awesome. I, I say this be, not because I am a researcher right now, but um, this is uh, how I see this um, profession. So yeah, these are my colleagues at uh, my lab or my colleague uh, that works uh, who, who works with me um in research they are young they are stylish they are fashionable uh, they are smart yes um and they are funny and not that weird uh because i don't know uh, even the first time i uh, when i uh, would start my phd journey i will think uh, I, I thought that oh my god i the people in my lab my colleagues uh, at my lab will uh, would be old or yeah I, I I I was worried at that time that oh how could I um, spend my time with them <laughs> because maybe I couldn't have fun doing my research because of the colleague that who are who were weird and something like that but these are the person that i met uh during my journey they are young they are smart they are brave and they are funny so uh, uh i could say that this myth is wrong i mean this myth about science or researcher are weird is totally wrong because they are even younger than me they are even like um super cool because they had their uh, own band they're a singer they're also a musician they're uh, even uh, a tv presenter something like that so uh, we need to debunk this myth that scientists or researchers are weird and i don't know in indonesia maybe we need to to um to change our stereotype, uh, to change our label to the researcher as well, because uh, by doing so, maybe we can attract more uh, young people to, to be part uh, or, or to become a researcher. So uh, why uh, another, another reason why I also say that uh, scientists or researchers are awesome because research is actually the future um yeah uh, it's very amazing uh, if we can be a part of that if we can be a part of something that will happen in the future so we can predict what will happen in five or 15 years uh from now and yeah uh we, we it's super cool if we can um contribute to any technology or any invention uh, that will be a trend in five or ten years uh, later. So yeah, that's why I I said scientists and researcher are actually awesome. Um, another myth is that there is nothing creative about science, math, or computer. It's totally wrong because uh, to invent something to uh, discover a new thing that uh, will contribute to the human human race uh, we need to think out of the box we need to have a creativity so i think this myth is totally wrong and the last myth uh, that i would like to highlight is that you cannot make much money being a scientist or researcher well uh, it's not totally true because these are uh, some surveys uh, that is conducted by zipia uh, this is the salary range uh, for researcher in general 
uh, in the US, yep, if I'm not mistaken. And these are the salary range for the resourcer in Europe and Japan. So actually, um, being a resourcer can also make you, uh, I mean, maybe you cannot be a rich, crazy rich person, if I can use the popular term, uh, crazy rich, but uh, you can uh, make uh, money uh, by being a researcher or scientist, actually. And I believe that uh, every profession, if you do it, if you put your effort on that, if you learn and try your best to do it, I believe that you can get back uh, equal reward for you, whether it is a uh, good salary or good experience or uh, give you many net, uh, good network or links to uh, great people, to famous people or to amazing people. So that, yeah, uh, actually uh, this myth is totally, I mean, it's not totally true because um, I don't know, in Indonesia, maybe we need to, con to, to take this issue, uh, I mean, to, to take this concern um, so that people we can, can be a resourcer and they can be attracted to be a resourcer because of the salary, because I don't know what, how, how is the situation in Indonesia right now. Maybe you can share your thought and your um, experience maybe, because I heard that some of you previously mentioned that uh, you, you're you working as a resourcer or uh, work in this field. So maybe you can share your thought about this, but based on my experience uh, that, um you can make money by being a researcher or scientist okay that's all i hope that i can deliver it really well <laughs> because yeah honestly uh, at the moment i'm learning friends and i feel like my brain <laughs> it's quite messed up at the moment because of the friends and the english structure in my brain uh, i'm sorry it's not uh, if it sounds like uh, an excuse, but yeah, hopefully I can deliver it um, well to you and proof, uh, bring the some proof to you that uh, research is actually fun and it's interesting. Thank you very much for your attention. So these are my emails. Uh, you can contact me if you want to discuss something related to uh, research or anything else and these are my youtube channel actually it's not a you know a fancy youtube channel or <laughs> a good youtube channel i just want to uh, share my daily life to my family actually because uh, my family uh, are in indonesia so i i sometimes would like to share with them my activity here so that they can uh, you know can see uh, their children there uh, because I, I live here with my husband so uh their brother and sister and something like that uh, so that i created this youtube channel and sometimes i also uh share some tips or tricks or story or uh, share my experience uh, during my phd journey so i hope that if uh, some some of you uh, can subscribe or follow me, but uh, yeah, if if you found this, uh, only if you find this this channel is um, beneficial for you, of course. If not, just leave it out. So no problem. Okay, uh, if you have any question, uh, please, uh, yeah, just ask. Uh, let me know. Okay, I uh, I will give the mic and the space to. Uh, Sophie again. Okay, thank you, Ka. Wow. Uh, wow, what a jaw dropping presentation from you. And uh, uh, the insight about the thank you for giving us like an insight, a new insight about the research, especially for me, because I never heard about that before. And 
Yeah, because like uh, I hope we can gain and implement about your uh, from your sharing and knowledge as soon as possible. I mean, and next we'll have a photo taken by our amazing host. Uh, our sorry, Beth. Uh, could you please, Beaver? Could you right. please take picture? Yeah. Thank Wait you. All right, uh, maybe in the living room. Would you please stop sharing your screen? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, so we are going to take some clicks here and I'm going to count down to the time. Uh, so please open your mic, uh, sorry, your camera as long as it's possible for you. All right, so it's going to have uh, two sheets in here. The first page, one, two, three tiers. Uh, okay, that's great. Wait a moment. Second page, one, two, three tiers. Okay, great. All right, I'm giving the mic back to you, Sophia. Okay, thank you, Beth. Okay, such an honor to have you here to cut you and giving us an integrable insight about research. And once again, let's give Robin a big applause, guys. And okay, I bet all of you are excited for asking questions. Okay, so those of you like wants to ask to Kaim, uh, you can raise your hand and one question, uh, one per, uh, one person for one question. Okay, and please make it straight and to the, straight to the point and make it short. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, um, make. Okay. okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I want to ask, what is the definition of researcher? Because as long as I know that every company has their own research. So there, there, there are so many companies here and they have their own research and development department. Uh, okay, by the way, I'm work as a research and development department. So, so what, what is the definition of researcher itself? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, please, that you, you can answer the question directly. Uh, okay, hi, Aide. Thank you for the question. That's a really great question. Uh, so uh, actually in, uh, you know, in a simple term, researcher is uh, someone who do uh, research. It can be uh, research in business. It can be research in the academic environment because, uh, yeah, uh, like you have mentioned previously that uh, research has um, various uh, nature while uh, you know while while someone conducting a research uh, it has a various nature in it uh, based on what field they they are doing and based on the uh, place or so I mean uh, if you're talking about research in uh, academic uh, environment it will be slightly different with the research that we are doing in company for example uh, because company uh, I mean uh, both of them actually have uh, the same uh, purpose to answer some questions to to search the fact about something uh, whether it's uh, related to uh, to to the issue about uh, how to increase their selling product or whether to answer some 
problem or phenomena in the social world. Uh, yeah, the, the main thing is that they have the same purpose that um, they would like to answer, they would like to search answer an answer uh, for their questions. So that's, uh, I, I think, uh, the definition of a researcher. But yeah, the nature of the work, the environment, the scope of the work uh, can be different between uh, science or, uh, I mean, between research that is conducted in uh, the academic environment uh, in the university uh, and uh, the one that is conducted in um, in the company because in the company they usually have very uh, very swift uh, and tight schedule because they don't have enough time uh, to do you know a very complicated and uh, in depth uh, research so uh, that's also uh, contribute to the you know to the scope of the research so but but yeah basically they're all the same they 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 try to look for an answer uh, or to prove some uh, facts for the hypothesis or for the questions that they have. I hope that my answer can can be you know can give you uh, a good explanation about uh, the definition of researcher. Or do you have thank any you. follow up question about that? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. All right. I'm sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Thank you for the question, and then thank you for uh, the question, Kak Ade, and thank you for the answer, Kak Iyo. Okay, and now next to Aziza. Yes, you can ask to Kak Iyo. Okay, uh, thank you for the time, uh, Akika. So, Actually, uh, my background is from computer science and uh, information systems. So I'm kind of know some a little bit about natural language processing. But I wonder, uh, because your background is uh, from low science. So mm -hmm. I was wondering that whether it's uh, does in your team, uh, I mean, uh, do you have a team for that research? And uh, what kind of roles, if there is a team in that research, what kind of roles in each team, like uh, maybe one one of them doing the coding and etc. And one of them, like, I, I just wondering the how's, how is the job uh, description in that research, if, if, uh, if that was held by a team? I think that's uh, my question. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, Aziza, for, for the question. It's uh, a great question as well. Uh, so uh, actually, I am uh, the one uh, who are working uh, at this project. I mean, only me and my professor. So meaning that uh, I, I am the only one who work on this project. So, um, yep, I need to learn about coding as well. Uh, but previously in my master degree, uh, during my two year master degree, I learned uh, some coding st stuff like R program and Python and something like that. And even for my master degree, I took uh, a topic that was totally like a computer science kind of things. Uh, it's a text mining work uh, to, to analyze some text. So that's why I can, I, I, I guess that's one of the um, reason why I can, I could get accepted uh, in this uh, PhD fellowship program because previously I did some computer, uh, I mean, some uh, text mining and, L and LP technology for, for my uh, master thesis. So, uh, but actually uh, some of the, some research project in the university, they have uh, more than one uh, person in it. I mean, they have a team for that. 
but actually all of them did almost the same i mean almost the same portion of the work uh, every one of them have to be able to do coding uh, and every one of them have to uh, have to learn about the topic the issue and to do the literature review to write and to do the end-to-end -end process research process the the thing that uh make it different is that maybe um the porsche uh, i mean the the perspective of the uh, of the research for example uh if you're talking about let's say cyberbullying one of them can capture the phenomenon from the social science uh point of view for example how for example uh, the the uh the family help their children from the uh cyber bullying for example and another and another resourcer will uh, capture it will analyze it from the psychology side or something like that so actually all of them uh do the same portion uh do the end-to-end -end process even though like um uh, like the one who cannot do coding or don't understand about how to analyze the data using the sophisticated technology or something like that. They need to learn about that. So yeah, that's uh, the role of each researcher in the university. But I believe that in a company, we are talking about, uh, you know, the R&D department in, uh, in the company, they have they usually divide it, uh, divide the role into, you know, into uh, some, uh, divided the work in, uh, for, for, for some roles. I mean, everyone sometimes just uh, focus on the data cleaning and another one can collect the data and another one can analyze it and another one can visualize the data or something like that because uh, it's because of the, you know the straight uh, timeline. They don't have enough uh, enough time. If only one person, uh, if if they only hire one person to to do all of the stuff, so that's why. Merci, mm kan -hmm. Darian. Okay, thank you for the question and answer. Now let's move on to Kai. Kai Situ Nur Hayati, yes, can yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity, and also thank you to Mbak Ningrum. It's really great uh, for me to uh, hearing your experience, and then I'm really curious and wonder, and I want to asking about what kind of the best moment in your research uh, experience. And then the second one, uh, I would like to ask about um, realism and also the idealism. How uh, you can make it different when you have uh, research or something like that, meet idealism and realism. Thank you very much. That's all my questions. Um, sorry, uh, Siti, it's, I, I don't know, it's a connection problem from my side or anything. <laughs> So I, I missed some point uh, from your question. Is it uh, okay for you to repeat it again? Okay, I'm sorry. Never mind. Uh, okay. About my sound and now clearly. Uh, yep, yep. Okay. Um, my first question is about what the best moment that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, from your experience in research field. Mm -hmm. And then um, I want to ask about the idealism. Sometimes okay. there's a ah. right? So okay. what kind of, how you can make it different. Mm, idealism okay. and also the realism. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, that's a interesting topic. <laughs> okay, uh, the first uh, question is that about uh, the uh, best moment uh, that I ever faced uh, that I have experienced during my journey, my research journey, is actually uh, the feeling that I feel I learn new things every day. 
So uh, when I start to uh, learn about research methodology, about research, um, it, it was uh, when I when I was in Thailand at the time uh, during my master's degree, I got so many colleagues from different backgrounds, for, from various backgrounds. Uh, one of uh, my uh, colleague uh, was a nurse, one of them was a computer scientist, and another was like environmental uh, scientist or something like that. And every day in my class feels like um, I found something uh, new, like, for example, how the zoologists uh, calculate birth, birds in one forest, for example. You cannot imagine how to calculate, how to count birds, because they, they can, like, just flapping everywhere, fly everywhere, but there is a method to calculate it. So it's very interesting. Or how to count fish in the river because they, they will, you know, swim and they will not just freeze in, under the water. And there is a new method. There is a method that uh, how to count it and something like that. So uh, I think that's uh, the best feeling, uh, the best moment that I feel so far. I mean, I can learn new things almost every day and about the idealism and realism <laughs> yep um it's quite difficult to you know to balance uh between uh, those two um the th uh, two things because sometimes uh especially for me the one who is uh, who consider uh herself as uh you know perfectionist person but yeah uh, um it's quite difficult for me but the thing is that um we need to know uh, about the scope of our study so uh in our inner inner you know in our heart maybe we would like to solve a problem for the world and we we want to find an answer to and uh, to 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 solve uh you know uh, a big problem in this earth or something on this earth or something like that but um we we need to realize about how the, the time that we have for solving the problem we need to think about uh what kind of data that we we can get to answer that uh, the question that we are looking for we need to uh, understand about uh the source that we have to to uh to analyze or, or to 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 um to to do to, to to do the research to answer the question something like that so uh day by day i learned that um we need to um to give a limitation uh, i mean to, to scope down our research to something that we can measure something that we can achieve uh, something so, so that it's can achievable or something like that because maybe we can answer uh, some questions but we need more time to do that so uh it it means that we need to uh to do the work for a very long long time and we don't have enough sources we don't have enough funding to to finance the the research and something like that so that's why we need to set our uh our limitation i mean our scope for for the research that's uh, the way i try to balance my ideality my idealism with uh yeah with the realism yeah i hope that will the answer will help to you <laughs> that will answer your question All right, Sophia, don't forget to right. your... I'm sorry, I forgot the <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Beb. Okay, thank you, Kat Yung, for the answer. Okay, now Pleasure. let's move on to 
Bobby, are you there? Do you want to of ask questions? Yeah. Yes. Because okay. you already raise your hand, I think you yeah. want to ask. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Bobby. I'm from the Universitas Andalas, West Sumatra. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, I think... I, I, I'm actually from Padang. From oh, Solo. you're from Padang? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Kalam uni. Uh, salam. <laughs> okay. Yeah, our research and publication are two activities uh, cannot undertake and spirit mm -hmm. editing. And then... Um, uh, and then with uh, two variable this like is letting dependent of the our uh, qualification uh, productivity as academia uh, for most example I lectured and then the one of the criteria of our productivity is research and publication uh, but uh, what we have to do to increase not only quantity but also quality of our research and Publication in the reputable international journal, especially. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yep, uh, totally agree with you uh, because um, a publication or a research paper, or we can also call it like um, a manuscript or yep, uh, article, journal article is one of the way we disseminate the result of our research that's uh, one of uh, one of the op options uh, for a researcher or scientist to deliver uh, their insight their findings so the quality of course uh, we need to be really concerned we need to really concern uh, of the quality uh, maybe some of you ever heard that indonesia uh, became one uh, the second country i mean the top second country that contribute to the predatory journal in 2021 i mean uh, it's very it's quite amusing uh, if i could say that uh, but yeah uh, if we see this from a good, you know, a good uh, mind, <laughs> I mean, um, this this is a good start to you know to improve uh, to elevate our research activity, uh, even though it's not a good uh, you know a good uh, it give us a bad reputation, but I mean it's a good start. I mean uh, a bad a bad uh, reputation is actually better than than just doing nothing, right? So yeah, uh, actually Indonesia is uh, rank was ranked as the second country that contributes a lot to for the uh, rep, uh, predatory journal. What is predatory journal uh, uh, actually? Um, it's a fake journal. So everyone actually can just publish their work there, but uh, without a proper review and uh, without the you know the quality control. If if we are talking about the product, so they just pay uh, to the journal and the journal will just publish it. But yeah, is it because of the university or some of the institution? Uh, have a set a requirements for the researcher to you know they have to publish at least one or two journal every year or something like that so people try to <laughs> to achieve right. the 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 target every every year so that that's why the quality you know uh, uh, become uh, uh, there is a reduction of the quality and i agree i totally agree with you that the quality is actually more important than just a quality that's why uh, what one takeaway that i uh, get uh, when i uh, publish my first journal is that my professor don't allow me to just uh, uh, so uh, like this <laughs> sorry so actually in one research you can uh, write some uh, several paper from only one research 
but sometimes the quality will be decreased because of you you part it into several several pieces um it can reduce the the quality of the research because you want to get a, a lot of uh, publication and you just separate it into some uh, papers so that's why sometimes it can reduce the quality so that's why my uh, my uh, professor at the time uh, suggest, uh, suggested me that uh, you just need to publish one research, uh, one publication, but uh, I want you to publish it in the key one, key one uh, Scopus and ISI Web of Science uh, index journal, indexed journal, so something like that. So, and yep, uh, that's that's one of the takeaways. <laughs> uh from my master's degree at that time so yeah i totally agree with you actually <laughs> about that okay thank you yeah. okay thank you yeah, for the yeah, hot issue in academia mm -hmm. yeah yes, yes. okay now let's move on to uh i'm sorry guys uh because that's due to the time limitation so only five people can ask okay now the last but lastly we have a uh, kak roko radiat yes yes me thank you uh a question okay uh thank you so uh, i have a, a question about uh, the research the researcher i think uh so uh I want to ask about uh, what's the difference of uh, I don't know uh, the the researcher with the innovator is it any different uh, because uh, like in like uh, like in Singapore I think uh, or maybe uh, uh, in a thesis uh, my lecturer ever uh, said that. Uh, in the magister that uh, we have to to ending and uh, uh, our lecture we have to uh, uh, do a thesis so i mean the, my lecturer ever said that uh, the thesis is not uh, to the, the thesis was not the uh, design or do a concept design to create a something but uh, the thesis is a uh, research this just means a uh, base of the problem. Found the problem and then found the data, analyze and try and uh, you will find uh, the answer causes uh, that the problem, the problem causes. So I think, uh, uh, I think it's, it's it's so it's so different with uh maybe the innovating or from the innovator is uh so if you willing uh with uh with your job is it uh your job with uh have a have a have a same if same meaning with the, the innovator or or is totally different okay that's my question all right, great. Um, yep, um, I totally agree with you actually about um, innovation and research. Uh, if you're talking about uh, these terms, especially from the linguistics uh, uh, point of view, um, uh, it's a kind of, uh, there are some differences uh, between them. Actually, uh, one thing uh, that we used to, it, it, maybe it, it's uh, another myth about research that if we do a research, we need to create something new. We need to have a novelty. Uh, we need to search a new thing. We, we cannot be uh, really similar with the previous research or something like that. That's uh, one of the myth about research that I ever heard when I was in bachelor degree. So that's why some uh, of my colleagues and even me myself felt this parade because, oh, how 
how can I uh, find a new uh, a new things or a new invention or something like that? But actually, a researcher is not always inventing a new technology or a new things. We can uh, in research we can't improve uh, uh, you know a finding from the previous research. We can add more. Uh, uh, more factors or more um, things, uh, more, uh, you know, uh, variables to the research, or even we can recreate the research. I mean, uh, uh, for example, <laughs> if the previous research is conducted in China, for example, we can also try to conduct the same research in Indonesia, and we can see the difference between them. So research is actually not always inventing something. That's uh, that's the thing that I think uh, the main difference between the research and invention. But if we invent something, we need to do a research. I mean, if you're talking about invention, uh, there is no way to do the to do that to get it bef uh, without research. So uh, we need to, uh, for example, like um, uh, in, maybe in mathematics uh, to calculate, uh, to, to get a new formula for something uh, so that uh, one of the process in our life, for example, can be easier. Uh, is it because of the research? Uh, some mathemat mathematician, mathematician uh, try to uh, find a new formula to, to create, uh, to, to help uh, other fields to to get better to improve it or something like that. So, yeah, uh, to to if you're talking about innovation, research is needed in it, even though it's only like a piece of uh, it's only a small part of the invention. Um, uh, research is is needed in in the in innovation. Even one of my friend. Uh, they they can create uh, they they created a new you know a new invention uh, in this case uh, a tool to detect about uh, a pH or something in water or something like that um, and they 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 conduct research to 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 formulate it of course and then uh, the outcome of the research can be a pattern a pattern so they they register. Uh, the system and the calculation that they have uh, to the patent uh, to the organization and uh, register the patent for that so that uh, if any uh, company or any parties that uh, parties that would like to use that technology they have to pay the patent uh, to the researcher so yeah that's uh uh, that's my opinion about the difference between the research and the invention. The researcher and the inventor, yeah. Yes, okay, uh, thank you. So, find, uh, find the causes and then there's uh, going to be a data to be inventing. Uh, to yeah. the, invent the next mm -hmm. inventing process. Okay, uh, yeah. thank you for the answer. Pleasure. Okay, great. Thank you for the interactive question and answer from you guys and that from our conductor. All right. I bet all of you are excited for today's FGD session and that you will be divided to a several breakout rooms by our Zoom house today and then accompanied by our fantastic facilitator for this evening and then you will have around 15 minutes for a discussion and then have fun in your discussion guys bye bye see you
Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay, um, the four. Uh, there will be four of us ya. Sofia, uh, me as the host, Beverly, and of course uh, Miss Conductor in this main room ya. But uh, first of all, there are questions from YouTube. Uh, from Hasna Fairuza. Uh, she asks that okay uh is the curiosity mindset will form an interest in the research things as simple as we don't trust hoax news until we get a reference from a journal that explains it scientifically uh, do you mind to answer uh tanning room yeah sure sure um yep um actually the Hasna, yeah, the question from Hasna is Hasna. about the curiosity and uh, the trust about the news, I mean, from the common media news uh, that we used to consume every day. So uh, even, uh, so uh, this is the, the, the case actually, um, even from the research paper or the publication, we cannot just read from one source, we need to read for several or uh, from several sources uh, to to get uh, the answer that maybe we would like to know, uh, we would like to search because every research has its limitation. It has its own uh, scope. So therefore, uh, while reading a research paper, we need to understand the context the the scope of the research so sometimes it's only involved you know um small uh small uh, samples but uh it gives us a new insight in new insight about something uh and another another research can can have a bigger sample but sometimes the the finding is contradictive with the previous research, something like that, because of they have different scope sometimes. So yeah, even, uh, yeah, we, we cannot, we maybe cannot total 100% uh, give our, our trust to the common media, media, news media nowadays, but we, if we would like to search more information from the literature from the research paper we need to understand the scope as well to, so that we can get a better understanding about the issue i hope my answer can give uh can answer uh, has not question is there any follow-up question from her no all right uh from from youtube i guess uh yeah Uh, oh yeah, and then uh, a question again from yeah Ramdani Ramadan. Okay. And sorry, uh, that question actually from Ram uh, Ram. From from Ramdani Ramadan ya, yeah, because uh, Hasna cancelled. Ya. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, has, has, uh, eh, sorry, sorry. Also, uh, he asks. Okay, I want to ask is, is there any stupid topic research? Because I want to do research that is out of the box, and I'm but I'm too afraid of people's responses. Okay, this mm. from Hasna. Uh, the first was from Ramdani Ramdani. Oh, okay, okay, Ramdani. So I hope my my answer perfectly can give you a uh, you know satisfaction <laughs> okay so uh, for hasna um in my opinion there is no stupid uh topic there is no stupid question about in research because sometimes uh we need to think uh we need that stupid question to answer you know uh, an issue but uh The problem is that I mean the the things that we need to take into consideration is that um, how 
can we measure it? I mean, if we if we have a, a question or a hypothesis about something or about uh, we would like to know about one issue, we need to uh, think also how to prove it. Uh, what data that we we need to 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 bring us uh, to closer to the answer. Uh, and how is uh, the the process? How to measure it? And um, uh, do we do we need enough of funding or source uh, sources to 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 analyze it? Something like that. So um, I get uh, in my opinion, there is no stupid question in research. There is no stupid topic in research. But uh, yeah, uh, we only need to realize about the sources that we have about the those factors um, that um, that bring us to to you know to do the the to look for the answer for, for the question so you guys don't don't need to to feel like it's a stupid question or something like that because like this guys so if if we if what if we uh, would like to start a research we need to have a problem, right? Like one of the uh, one of our uh, friends uh, previously uh, explained that we need to to know uh, the problem. We, we we need to have a problem. Now, uh, to 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 get the problem, it's not that you know, it's not that uh, easy. If I could uh, say, I mean, we need some. We need to read. Uh, the previous research uh, researchers or the previous studies from uh, yeah to 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 know better about the issues i mean to formulate a question to formulate a uh, a problem uh, we we need to understand about the you know the basic the, the basic concept of the issue so if if you already know about the concept about the basic information of the issue, I guess there is no uh, stupid research topic. Okay, uh, thank you, Kaning uh, Rumia, for the answers to our YouTube viewers. Yeah, I hope uh, that answer uh, will. Yeah, I hope your questions. Uh, will be answered properly, yeah? uh, Ramdani and Hasna. Okay, thank you for throwing some questions too. All right, uh, maybe if, um, uh, anyone here wants to ask, like Beverly or Sophia? Yes, please. Yeah. That's why okay. All right, finally, I get my set to ask mm -hmm. room. Canning room, uh, just only a question because I was pretty curious about uh, when the first time you change uh, your interest. So how did you start changing your interest from law to a research? And I think that most of people, maybe they, they just realize what they want to be. For example, maybe after graduating from a uh, different uh, or maybe far away from being a research, for example. And uh, after working, they finally realized what they want to be. And it's talking about being a research. But sometimes uh, we have no clue how to start or even after getting our uh, master relates to uh, research, for example. And then what kind of company we should uh, enroll in and so on. Mm, OK. Yep, uh, that's uh, one of our <laughs> one of the phenomenon in our <laughs> society. Actually, yeah, uh, sometimes we don't know uh, what what our patient is and what should we do, and we have too many um, interests, uh, and we don't know which one will be the best. Uh, you know, the best. A thing that we need to pick as our main, um, yeah, main profession or something like that. So, actually, um, since I was in my bachelor degree, I felt like I I didn't really in uh, really uh, I I didn't really have in have uh, some interest 
in you know in analyzing uh, regulation. Uh, my interest, uh, I, I interest, uh, I was interested more on knowing why this regulation is created. How, what, what kind of regulation that we need to solve uh, some phenomena in our society, something like that. That's why I feel like, oh, maybe uh, my, uh, I am not a lawyer. I, I will not, I, I wouldn't be a great uh, advocate or a judge or something like that. But I, I would like to know more about the phenomenon behind uh, the creation of any laws or something like that. So from that uh, point, uh, I I start I started to learn that um, my interest is uh, doing research. So uh, that's why in uh, for my master degree I I continue my study um, in that uh, major in research methodology, and I started to learn that oh, okay. So actually, the researchers is like a fashion designer. They need to know, um, you know, the season. They need to know the trend. They need to know uh, the shape of the body so that they can uh, design uh, a good, uh, a good uh, clothes for people for for their collection something like that so research researchers is actually doing almost the same like the uh, you know like the fashion designer if i yeah if i could say because um doing a research uh, while doing a research you need to know the issue you 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 need to know the problem and you have to create the question and after that to answer this question which method that um you need uh, to to use in this research, maybe there are a lot of uh, sophisticated technology or methodology out there. But sometimes you just need to pick the simple one to to uh, to your research to to uh, to apply it in in your research because that simple methodology can bring you uh, right to to the answer. So yeah, so that's that's why I I say that. Um, fashion designer, uh, researcher is somehow similar to the fashion designer. And uh, that's, yeah, uh, when I was in bachelor degree, I have, uh, I had realized that uh, actually my interest is not in creating the regulation or analyzing the regulation, but I would like, I, I really want to know the phenomena in the society and how to solve it with the regulation and something like that. And in terms of the uh, companies that I, yeah, uh, I, I ever worked uh, about my professional experiences, I, I actually ever worked at some uh, startup companies. And I love to work in uh, at startup companies because um, they usually don't have, you know, the exact system they still uh, try to improve uh, or find a new framework a new system for, for solving their their problem or yeah so that's why a startup company is the i could say that the startup company is the perfect place uh, to uh, to learn to learn from the expert actually for free and yeah uh, from there I actually uh, find uh, found some ideas to for, for my uh, research while I I was working in uh, at startup for uh, like uh, uh, sorry mm -hmm. uh, guys uh, the FG session is it's up. over oh, it's yeah. over <laughs> yeah the, all the participants yeah, are the going back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, coming. Okay. Thank you, Kayu. Wow. Pleasure. Well, guys, welcome back. How was your discussion? 
uh, could you give a thumbs up if your discussion was great? Okay, I can see some. Okay. I can see some, but can I see? Okay. And we are still waiting for. How's your discussion? Could you give your thumbs up? We need more time. Oh, you need more time. Or you can say it out loud if your discussion was great. How is it? We gotta need more time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like uh, all famous quotes in Brazil, like we need more time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, since all of you come back, uh, I'm gonna read uh, the final statements from Kayub. Maybe you can give something in French so we can learn you too. Oh no, it, my French is so, so, so poor because it's, uh, it's very difficult. I mean, <laughs> the pronunciation and even uh, they have very long words but they only like say the 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 sort sound they have they only have the sort sound for that I, I'm afraid that I pronounce it um <laughs> I, I pronounce it wrong so uh, maybe the final uh statement from me is that um uh, I hope that more youngster uh, more people can uh take part on a research so that we can, uh, you, we get, we guys can uh, improve our uh, research and development and innovation uh, condition in our country, and we can contribute more uh, on uh, to the society. Uh, I really love uh, one of uh, the motto from my previous university that uh, our soul is for the benefit. Uh, of the mankind and I guess uh, that's the uh, that's uh, what we need to do for our society I mean uh, that's uh, what what we need to have in our heart that what we do can be uh, can contribute to the mankind something yeah okay <laughs> uh, so one of the uh, some some of you guys asked me about the uh, about my research paper, I, I have put, put uh, the link on the chat box. So I hope uh, you guys can enjoy reading uh, my papers and really love to hear uh, your opinion, your, um, yeah, your feedback about my research as well. And we can discuss further about it. So that's all. I hope that uh, you can get new insight from my presentation today. And yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Kayu. Wow, great. Give it big applause for her. Okay, now do to our time limitation, guys. I'm so sorry that we have to skip our representative session in our FGD. So yeah. We will have to close our session and then we already have our after class tradition like our photo taken. So please wait in our Instagram so we can post your handsome and beautiful face. Okay, now once again, thank you for being here, Kayu and then sharing your knowledge with us and it is superb. And I hope it will be, be beneficial for us in the future. And also thank you to all prisoners for spending your time with us within your busy schedule. And I hope to see you in next prison classes. Don't forget to register to our class tomorrow, uh, tomorrow and also Saturday. And bye-bye and see you.